Hi there, or oh, welcome or oh, welcome back. If you watch my videos often, you know that my channel is all about relaxed here. But today I'll be doing a little bit different. I'll be doing my friend here and I'll be doing a curly perm. And these are the products that I'll be using the Wave by Design product line. It is very important to drape your client before any chemical services. Why is this important? This will prevent any chemical from touching the client's skin or damaging their clothing. It is also important to use a plastic cape rather than a cape that is made from material. Why? The plastic cape will prevent anything that falls on it from soaking through so that it does not touch the client's skin or their clothing. If you were to use a material that is made from cloth, then the possibility lies that it could soak through. Of course, we want to double up on our towels when we are doing our chemical services. Now I'm doing the porosity test. Now what is porosity? Porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb moisture. So we want to see how fast or how slow the product that we are going to be placing on the hair will be absorbed. Of course, we want to do the porosity test on different sections of the hair. Why? Because different sections of the client here could possibly have different porosity. Now in my case, all of my client here is the same porosity. On the scalp air, we want to check for scars or abrasions also. Next, I will be doing the elasticity test. Now, what is elasticity? Elasticity is the ability of the hair to stretch and return without breaking. So now we want to see how strong or how weak our client here is. Of course, she's my friend. So how weak or strong my friend here is. So of course, doing it on different sections of the hair just the same as we would do for porosity. To prepare our hair for the next step, I'll be shampooing our hair or washing our hair to remove any buildups of oils and dirt that may be on our hair. Now the focus of the wash will be on her hair rather than her scalp as we do not want to irritate our scalp because we are going to be using a fear relaxer. Now, I do not know what happened to my device, but for some reason did not record the shampooing process. And so I'll tell you exactly what I did. So while washing her hair, I ensure that I kept her hair nice and smooth. I did not wash her scalp area. I focus, as mentioned earlier, on her hair because that is where we want to get clean. And in no way do I want to irritate her scalp as we are going to be using a Theo Relaxer. And if it were to catch on her scalp, of course, it could irritate or burn her if I were to manipulate the scalp area. And so during this shampooing process, I am not manipulating the scalp area. Now I am towel blotting her here to remove the excess water. Of course, you want to remove all the water from her here for the next process, which is the application of the Theo Relaxer. As you are seeing here, I am using the towel to remove as much water from her hair as possible. And then I just use my fingers to separate her hair into some twists and I placed her under a dryer. This dryer is on cool temperature like your fan at home. Now I'm sectioning the hair into four sections for control. The front section is parted from the top of the head to the top of the hairs and that will be the front and the rest will be the back section. Next, I'm going to go in with Revlon Scalp Shield to base our scalp area and I'll be going through each section and subdividing it and placing the base on the scalp area. Now, if you notice, this bottle has a sprout and so all I'm doing is placing it on the scalp and what will happen is that the heat from the body or the heat from the scalp will melt the base and cover the entire scalp area. Perhaps you're wondering what's the purpose of the base. The base will protect the scalp from the Theo Relaxer. So it will act as a buffer between the relaxer and our scalp area. Now 
Now I'm placing the base around our hairline. I'm also going to be putting it onto our hairs because we have to protect all our skin that is surrounding the hairline. This area at the nape that you're looking at is quite sensitive. So we want to ensure that we are covering it with the base. Of course, you know, when you have your shower, you're going to be rubbing those areas to get them nice and clean. So we want to ensure that we are protecting those areas because they are very sensitive. After applying the base around the entire hairline, I'm using my fingers to spread it right over the skin area. As you may know or have recognized that I'm using the Theo Relaxer. Now the Theo Relaxer is from the Wave by Design brand and the active ingredient is the ammonium theoglycolate. That is the reason why it is called a Theo Relaxer as a shortening for that big word I just mentioned there. Now in the bottle, this is how it looks and I'm telling you, it's not smelling great either. This relaxer has a strong odor, so you want to ensure that the area that you're doing the application, it is well ventilated. So the first application of the Theo Relaxer is to the mid shaft of our hair, as you're seeing there. And I'll tell you a little bit why this is the case. I am not using the Theo Relaxer from the jar. I put it in a mixing bowl, so I'm using it from the mixing bowl. So this is the first time that my friend is having a chemical service done to her hair. She has always had her hair natural and so she decided that she wanted a change. But you know, she didn't want to lose it on her curliness. So that's the reason why she chose to have her hair curly perm. Now the reason why I'm applying the Theo Relaxer to the mid shaft is because that section of the hair is the most resistant or hardest to process. And why am I saying that? The reason is that it is further away from the scalp and if you know or may not know that the heat from the scalp is what helps to activate the relaxer. And so because this section of the hair is so far away from the scalp area, then it will take a longer time to process. If I were to put the Theo Relaxer near to the scalp area, then the heat from the scalp area would have caused the Theo Relaxer to process that section first and so the rest of the hair would have been under process. Perhaps you are wondering why I'm not applying the Theo Relaxer to the ends and the reason for this is because those sections of the hair are normally easiest to process and the reason for this is because that hair has been around for a while and has gone through a lot. And so we don't want to over process that area. And so we leave it for last. The Theo Relaxer will be applied to the mid shaft of all four sections. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to give the video a like. So if you notice, I'm not pressing the relaxer into the scalp area. I'm trying to avoid the scalp area as much as possible. Now I'm going back in and I'm going to do all the sections closest to the scalp area. So I'm going to apply as close as possible to the scalp, but not onto the scalp. And I'm not going to be pressing it into the scalp area. If you're new to my channel, I'm Mika and on this channel is all about hair care. So if that's something that you're interested in, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll always be notified every time I put out a new video. Keep watching. So it is during this phase that I apply the Theo Relaxer around the hairline at the nape area 
and as we go along you'll see how i do the application at the front sections Now I'm doing the same application at the front, applying it closest to the scalp area right throughout. Now I'm applying it to the ends of the hair shaft and I'm starting with the back section and I'm going to go all the way around until I complete all four sections. The Theo Relaxer does work in a similar manner as the sodium hydroxide relaxer. It breaks the bond in the hair as it is also an alkaline product. So it will break the disulfide bond. At the end of the application of a Thea Relaxer, I'm going to cover her hair with a steam cap and I'm going to leave it on for 15 minutes. Once the 15 minutes is up, I'll take her to the shampoo basin and I remove the steam cap from her hair and now I'm going to test to see if the hair is processed properly. Once I test the hair and I'm satisfied with the result, I am now going to rinse the Thea Relaxer from her hair to prepare her hair for the next step. During the rinsing process, we want to ensure that we remove all the Thea Relaxer from her hair and scalp area. So I'm going to be rinsing her hair thoroughly and as much as is needed. So if you notice, the pressure of the water is projected at her scalp area or is focused on her scalp area because we want to get all that chemical from off her hair and scalp. While rinsing her hair, I'm ensuring that I'm keeping her hair nice and smooth so I'm not doing anything that would cause her hair to tangle. So I want to keep it nice and smooth. So now you can see that her hair is nice and clean. So all the Thea Relaxer has been removed from her hair. Her hair is at the desired straightness. So now we are going to be ready now for the next step. So now we're ready for the booster and this is the booster that we're using, the Wave by Design booster. The active ingredient in this booster is ammonium theoglycolate just as what is in the Theo Relaxer. And this is what is going to set the stage for the hair to become curly. So I am not applying the booster all over here. I'm just applying to where I'm going to be placing the rods first. And the reason for doing that, if I were to apply the booster all over here, then the booster would have started its job and the, the rods are not yet in and so we don't want the hair to be set in a straight form we want to set in a curly form hence the reason why i'm only applying it where it is needed so as you see i'm starting with that first section that i apply the booster to and i'm applying more booster because we want to ensure that the hair is properly covered this is the size rods that i'm using today so she wants her hair to be nice and curly so those are the size rods that I'm using and of course I'm going in with my end paper and I'm using the book and wrap technique for the end paper. The end papers are just some small 
paper that you can see through and it helps to keep the hair at the ends nice and smooth and also to prevent the fish hook pattern that sometimes can occur if the hair is not worn properly around the rod. As was mentioned earlier, I am using the book end wrap technique for the end papers. And as the word suggests or the term suggests book end, basically you're folding the end paper in half just as how a book would look. During a roller setting, we usually stretch the hair and we roll the hair with tension. In this case, when we are putting in the rods, we don't want to put too much tension or wrap the hair around the rod too tight. Why? Because the hair will need space to expand. So we do it in a manner that is not tight so that the hair can expand or have space to expand while it is being processed in a curly formation. Here is a closer look at the book and wrap technique and the placement of the rods. The pattern that I'm using to place the rod is called a block setting or a block rod setting in this case. So just in a similar manner as how you would lay bricks or lay blocks when you're building a house. Is the same way I'm laying the rods in her hair and this will prevent the hair from having partings at the end of the rod setting. So when you remove the rods, you will not see any openings. So it will be looking nice and full. Enjoy the video, don't forget to give the video a like and if you're not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. So now that I'm moving on to another section of the hair, I'm now applying the booster to that section and then I'm going to be putting it in my rods. I am applying more booster as needed so that of course you want the hair to process properly so you can add more if you need to. So the aim is not to waste your booster but only to apply it when needed. Now that I'm at the back, I want to ensure that I remember the last rod I placed into her hair and the first rod I placed into her hair. So leave it in the comments and let me know which rod is the last rod that I placed. Now that I've put in all the rods in her hair, I am now going to cover her hair with a plastic cap and I'm going to leave it on for 15 minutes for it to process. Once it's completely processed, then I'm going to remove the plastic cap and I'm going to check the first rod that I place in and the last rod I place in. And I'm going to be checking for a S formation. So I'm going to look to see if I'm seeing an S and if I'm seeing an S and it's nicely formed, then I know that the hair is processed. And I'm going to do that for the first rod and I'm also going to do it for the last rod. And as long as those two rods are showing you S formation, then I am going to rinse it out. During this step, while rinsing the hair, we are not going to remove the rods as yet because it is not time to remove it. So we're going to rinse the booster thoroughly from our hair. So this does take a while because remember that your hair is of a certain length and the rods are of a certain size. And so the hair would have 
gone around the rod several times. So we have to rinse for a good amount of time to ensure that the booster is thoroughly removed from the hair before we can move to the next process. So during this process, the hair is already curled. So it's in the curly formation already. And so we are just removing the booster so that we can move to the next section. So once you're rinsing and you're not seeing any bubbles coming out of the hair in the water and the water is coming out nice and clear, then you know that the hair is thoroughly rinsed. So once we have done rinse and rinse and rinse the hair, we are going to towel block the hair with the rods in the hair. So we're not removing the rods. We are just going to towel block it and take out the excess water from the hair. And then we are going to move and then we are going to move to the next step. In this step, we are going to use the neutralizing solution and we are going to be using the Wave by Design neutralizer. And we are going to also be using a neutralizing bib. And this is how it is looking in the package. And once you remove it from the package, this is how it looks. So this neutralizing bib is what we are going to be using while we are neutralizing it here. And it has a little pouch that will catch the excess neutralizing solution that is running from the hair, as you're seeing there. And it also has on Velcro that we can pin around the client's hairline. So as you'll see, following up now, how we use the neutralizing bib. So this is how we use the neutralizing bib. So as you're seeing there, put it right around the hairline, take the ears out and ensure that it is right around the hairline and it is not on top of any of the rods. Next, we are going to use cotton around the airline and this will prevent any excess neutralizing solution from running into the client face or possibly running into her eyes. So we use this as a form of protection. Once we are done, this is how it's looking with the neutralizing bib all set and ready for us to neutralize her hair. Now I'm pouring the neutralizing solution on each rod and I'm ensuring that I'm pouring it on all the rods so that all the hair can receive the neutralizing solution. Now, the good thing about pouring it from the front is that it will run towards the back. And so while pouring at the front, it is going to run over the rods at the back. Now the purpose the neutralizer serve is to lock the hair in its new formation. So if I had removed the rods before I neutralize the hair, after a while, the curls would be gone from her hair. So to prevent the curls from leaving our hair and for the curls to be permanent, then we use the neutralizing solution to lock it in. The active ingredient in the neutralizing solution is hydrogen peroxide. During this phase, the atom bond that was removed during the theorelaxer application is being replaced. So now the atom returns. And so now we still have a disulfide bond. It is not as strong as it was before but at least it is there. I am not going to be removing the cottons from around our hairline. I am going to leave it on so that the excess neutralizing solution will not run in our face or run onto our skin. Then I'm going to cover our hair with a plastic cap and I'm going to leave it on for 10 minutes. Once the time is up, I'll remove the plastic cap, rinse our hair, and then remove the rods from her hair. Now I'm removing the rods from her hair and this is how the curls are looking. And no, we're not done yet. So we're just going to remove the rods and then move on to the next step. Now 
Now it's time to rinse out your hair after removing the rods. Now I'm towing blotting her hair to remove the excess water so that I can apply the conditioner. And I'm applying the conditioner generously all over her hair shaft. Now the conditioner that I'm using is the motion conditioner. However, this product line, the Wave by Design, does come with its own conditioner. So if you desire to have this style done to your hair or this chemical service done to your hair, I would suggest that you use that particular conditioner. I did not have that conditioner, and the reason why I use the motion conditioner. After allowing the conditioner to sit on her hair for 10 minutes, then I rinse her hair thoroughly. Then I tow a blot her hair in preparation for the next step. I am just dusting her ends. I'm not taking too much off. Of course, you know that when you just have a new hairstyle, you want to see your hair looking nice and long. So I'm just taking off what is necessary to take off and of course, leaving it in a nice shape. This product is the Define and Sheen Lotion and this will add moisture to her hair to keep her hair nice and curly. And if you notice, I'm not pulling down on her curls, I'm keeping them nice and tucked in. And that is how her hair is looking now. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about this chemical service. And also, if you have not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have not yet liked the video, don't forget to like it and of course share it with someone you think would benefit from it.